guys, I am Lainey Medvesic and I am the wellness coordinator at Oakwood Village. So a little bit about me, I was born and raised in Indianapolis, Indiana, and then moved to Ohio and went to college at Wittenberg University, received my degree in exercise science, and currently I am in grad school for healthcare administration through the University of St. Francis in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I'm doing an online program and graduate in four weeks. So I am very excited because it's been a long journey so far in the past year, working full-time and then going to school full-time online. So we're down to four weeks, and so I am super excited. Um, one thing I did want to mention, everybody that's on the call, you have been entered into a raffle for a $50 Kroger gift card. I'm jealous because I shop at Kroger, so I love Kroger. Um, it's a $50 gift card, and then I believe Kyle, I think, at the end is going to, yeah, he's shaking his head yes. He's going to pick a winner um, for the people who joined in today. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Like I said, this is, or like Kyle said, taking control of COVID-19. So what you will learn today, what germs are, where germs live, fast facts on COVID-19, fast facts on germs, the best practices for staying healthy, why masks are important, how we can stay active during COVID-19, and how we can stay mentally healthy during COVID-19. So I just wanna say at first, I know that a lot of people have been struggling either with mental illness, being like not able to see their families. I know like I've been social distancing myself, so I go to work and I go home and order my groceries online. We haven't really been spending any time with family just because a lot of us work in the healthcare field. So we're just kind of trying to social distance ourselves so we all stay safe. And then my number one priority is not trying not to get COVID. So then when I come to work, I'm not getting, you know, my residents sick. So, so which has more germs? And you guys can feel free to chime in or you don't have to. Um, do you guys think maybe a cell phone has more germs or a toilet seat? Maybe you can just think in your head for a second, or if you want to chime in, you're certainly more than able to do that. So the answer is a cell phone. So a cell phone carries up to 10 times more bacteria than most toilet seats. To me, that is so gross because I'm always using my cell phone for work, for other activities, and that's very gross. So how to keep it clean. So don't take your phone into the bathroom. I know I see a lot of people take their phone into the bathroom and they put it on the counter where people were washing their hands and where diaper bags sit and that's you know, very unsanitary. You can wipe your phone down with a microfiber cloth. What I do is if I do take my phone into the restroom with me, which I normally do not, um, I'll come out and I will take a Clorox bleach wipe and sanitize my phone. So actually Apple, Samsung, and a couple other phone companies came out when COVID-19 was happening and said, it is perfectly okay to wipe down your phone with a Clorox wipe. Um, it won't hurt your phone, it won't hurt the speaker in your phone, and it's a good way to get germs off. And then for even a deeper clean, you can use a combination of 60% water and 40% rubbing alcohol on a rag a few times. Um, this says each month I would be doing it almost maybe a couple times a week just to make sure those germs are off. And then wash your hands several times a day. So if, you're, if your phone has that many germs and I'm touching my phone, I'm texting on my phone, I'm sending emails, and then I'm touching my face, those germs on my phone are getting on my face and we do not want that. So which has more germs, a toilet seat or a cutting board? And I'll let you guys think about that for a second. Mm, I would say a toilet seat. <laughs> you think a toilet seat? All right, thanks for chiming in. Anybody else? Okay. The answer is a cutting board. <laughs> okay. I know. So a cutting board has up to 200 times the germs in your toilet seat at home. So why raw meat? Raw meat can have fecal bacteria from the internal organs of the animal, gross. Um, 
So what to do? Use a plastic cutting board so you can run it through the dishwasher to clean. So when I was unexperienced back in the college days, I had a wooden cutting board and that traps a lot more bacteria than a plastic cutting board does. So what I have now is a plastic cutting board and I make sure after I, like for instance, I made chicken last night. So I cut up the chicken and it was using the cutting board. When the chicken's in the oven, I actually wash the cutting board off in the sink with soap and water and then I put it in the dishwasher. So it's like a double whammy. It's getting clean from my sink with the soap I'm using and then it's going into the dishwasher. And then it just says wash your cutting board thoroughly with soap and water. So that's a good way to clean it too. This is the last one. So which one has more germs, a public toilet seat or a car steering wheel? Anybody have a guess on that? No? A car steering wheel. And you are correct. So out of all three of those, the toilet seat is the cleanest. And we use all of the other ones probably every single day. So that's a lot of germs. So the average car steering, steering wheel has up to 11 times more bacteria than a public toilet seat. So what should you do? You should clean your steering wheel often and wash or sanitize your hands before eating or before touching your face. So I have a big thing of hand sanitizer in my car and it's in the console. As soon as I get into the car, if I'm going to the grocery store, if I'm coming back from work, if I'm running any type of errand, I get in my car, I don't even take my mask off. I get in the car, I shut my door, open my console and I put hand sanitizer on my hands and then I take my mask off and then I touch the steering wheel. So I'm getting those germs off my hands before touching the steering wheel. Also, I do wipe my steering wheel down. I wipe my shifter down in my car, my buttons, my keys um, quite often because sometimes if I do forget those germs, you know, if you're driving and you're like, oh, like, gotta pull back my hair, I'm touching my face. So you wanna make sure your steering wheel is clean. So just some fast facts about COVID-19. So COVID-19 is a disease that was first identified in one China and is now being spread throughout the world. So COVID-19, so CO for Corona, V, V, I for a virus, D is for disease, and then the 19 after the COVID means um, what year it was identified, which was in 2019. COVID-19 affects different people in different ways. As you guys have probably seen on the news, I think it came out with a statistic about a week ago that 50% of the population that has COVID-19 is asymptomatic, which means they aren't showing any type of symptoms at all. So they're not, they don't have a fever, they don't have a cough, they don't have a sore throat, they don't have other symptoms that are going on with COVID-19. So that's why it's being spread so easily because you go to a family party and you're like, oh, this is my, you know, my family, I'm close to them, I know nobody has it. Well, let's say you go and somebody is asymptomatic and they actually do have COVID, but they don't know because they aren't showing symptoms. Well, then you can get it and then you can spread it to other people. And then COVID is spread from person to person through either coughing or sneezing. So viruses carrying airborne droplets can remain in the air or on surfaces even after the ill person is no longer there. So what would happen is if, you know, I go to the grocery store and I have a mask on, but I touch the grocery cart and somebody else who was touching the grocery cart has COVID and they coughed. And then I touch the cart and then I'm walking through the store and I pick up my cell phone to talk well that cell phone now has my hand germs on it that's on my face so it's super important that we're making sure if we do go to the store we're wiping down the carts or wiping down any type of groceries when you get home just so we can use extra precautions does anybody have any questions so far no nope okay thank you so fast facts about covid so older adults and people who have severe underlying medical conditions like heart or lung disease or diabetes seem to be at a higher risk for developing serious complications from COVID illness. But it does affect everybody differently. There are a lot of people who are asymptomatic. There are people who are my, my age, I will be 24 in two weeks, 
who I work out, I stay healthy, I eat right. There are people just like me that are being sent to ICU because they are extremely ill. So it affects everybody differently. So what should you do to help protect yourself from COVID? You need to wash your hands often, avoid close contacts, cover your mouth and nose with a cloth or face mask around others, cover coughs and sneezes, and clean and disinfect. So some fast facts about germs. People 65 and older make up 90% of the flu-related deaths and flu-related hospitalizations. Flu germs can spread an entire day before symptoms begin. Germs can survive on hands for up to three hours. Damp hands spread a thousand times more germs than dry hands do. There are between two and 10 million bacteria between fingers and elbows. And nearly 80% of sicknesses causing germs spread via hands. So that's why we're washing our hands frequently. And then it did say damp hands spread a thousand times more germs than dry hands. So it's really important to make sure after you wash your hands that you're drying off um, with either a towel or like a paper towel, um, just to make sure that your hands are completely dry. And then flu germs can spread an entire day before symptoms begin. So that's another problem that we're seeing with COVID is that people aren't showing symptoms and they think they're fine and they're going out into the public, hanging with friends, being with family. And then a couple days later, they're starting to show symptoms. But that time that they were with family, they were symptomatic and they were spreading those germs. So just to reiterate again, keeping germs away, wash your hands before eating or cooking, touching your face, wash your hands after using the bathroom, blowing your nose, sneezing or coughing, and don't share things um, like towels, lipstick, chapstick, that may be contaminated with respiratory germs. I know like I don't let my boyfriend use my chapstick. We don't drink after each other. We don't do any of that. So we keep all of our stuff separate. Um, I know a lot of people do like to drink after their family members, but maybe right now is not the best time to be doing that. So washing your hands. So keeping your hands clean is one of the easiest ways to avoid getting sick and spreading germs to others. Wash hands with soap and running water, rubbing them for 30 seconds or more. For every 15 seconds spent hand washing, 10 times more bacteria is removed. So doing it for 30 seconds, sing happy birthday song twice. Go through your ABCs. Um, I've had a couple of people say, I say a couple prayers and send them up to heaven while I'm washing my hands and that's about 30 seconds. So that's also a good way, you know, that way you know, okay, I sang happy birthday twice, I washed my hands, it's thorough. One thing we do need to remember is when we're washing your hands, really get in between those fingers like this, and also take your nails and go on your palms so the soap gets under your nails, so then if you're scratching your face at all, those germs are gone and not under your nails. Covering your mouth. Cover your mouth and nose with a tissue when you cough or sneeze. If you don't have a tissue, cough or sneeze into your upper sleeve or elbow to prevent spreading germs, do not use your hands. So when I cough or sneeze, I use the vampire method. So you pretend like you have a cape on, you take your cape and you go like this. And you cough right in between where your elbow and the other side of your elbow is. That way your germs are going into your shirt and not into your hands. Because if you sneeze in your hands and then you touch a surface, all of those germs that were, were on your hands are now on that surface and you can get other people sick. So why masks are important. So I know that there's a lot of controversy right now between wearing masks and not wearing masks. I personally think wearing masks right now is a great idea. So wearing a face mask will help prevent the spread of infection and prevent the individual from con contracting any airborne infectious germs. When someone coughs, talks, sneezes, they can release germs into the air that may infect others nearby. Face masks are part of an infectious control strategy to help eliminate germs. 
So there are three primary forms of face masks. The first one, I'm sure you guys have all have heard this, is the N95. That's something that's been very popular over the past couple of months with COVID. So this type of mask is a more tight fitting face mask. Actually at Oakwood, we have been fitted for N95. It is actually a mask that you have to a nurse, um, our nursing director here does it, but she actually fits it for you to make sure it's tight and it's suctioned to your face so no germs can get in. So in addition to splashes, sprays, and large droplets, this res or respirator can also filter out 95% of viruses and bacteria. These masks are meant for healthcare workers and are in short supply and should not be used by the general public. So the second one is surgical masks. I use my surgical mask right here almost every day. We don't have any cases of COVID, so we're okay just to use these surgical masks for right now. So they're disposable, so I come in every morning, I get my temperature taken, and I grab a mask, so you can throw them away. They're loose fitting, so they're not tight, they don't suction to your face like the N95 masks do. They cover your nose, mouth, and chin. So that is very important. So when I wear my mask, I make sure it's covering my nose and it's covering my mouth. We have a lot of people that wear their masks like this. Nope, it's not covering your mouth or your nose. Sometimes like this, not covering your nose because if you sneeze, all those germs are coming out. So you need to make sure you wear it over your nose and your mouth. So it should look just like this. So these are used to prevent the spread of potential infections, re infectious respiratory secretions from wearing from where to others. So these masks are meant for healthcare workers and are in short supply as well and should not be used by the general public. I am seeing now, I think I went to Sam's Club a couple days ago and they did have boxes of these types of masks. So we're starting to get more supply of these, which are good. And you, I would suggest wearing this type of mask over a cloth mask because these actually do have little filters in them. I think this is a three ply filter. So it's not as good as the N95 masks, but it does have some type of filter in it to help not spread the germs as much. And our last one, homemade masks. And I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of these. So these are the ones you make at home from cloths, cotton, paper supplies, such as a paper towel or a coffee filter. They're typically used to prevent the spread of potentially infectious respiratory secretions from the wearer to others. So these are recommended for public use. I've had a lot of people say, you know, these don't have the filters in them like the N95 and the regular, um, these masks. So what can we do? We've read up on this a lot here at Oakwood, and all of our residents wear these homemade masks. We actually have had residents that have made 50 or more masks for individuals that either work here that they can take home or for other residents, so we really appreciate that. But what you do is you can put that cloth mask over your face. I recommend putting a paper towel, a tissue, or a coffee filter. Um, right inside the mask because that's actually a filter. So that helps if somebody coughs on you, it helps the, you know, the tissue, the paper towel will help collect that. And then if you cough as well, it won't help those germs get out as fast. Any questions so far? No? Okay, thank you for shaking your head so then I know. <laughs> So who should wear a mask? So to prevent the spread of the virus from people without symptoms, because we did talk about 50% of the population being asymptomatic and not showing symptoms at all, the Center for the Disease Control, or the CDC, is now recommending that everyone wears a cloth face mask while in public places where it's difficult to maintain a six foot distance from others. So I wear my mask everywhere I go, even since the beginning. I've always worn a mask. Um, personally think it does help. I know a lot of states have mandated masks. So the entire state, um, like Florida, Texas, New York, um, there are quite a few states that you, you have to wear a mask. 
Ohio is one that we don't, but I know a lot of um, mayors have put into place. Uh, I personally live in Columbus and almost all of Franklin County and um, a couple other surrounding counties as well have mandated masks just in their county. So I appreciate that because I feel safer going out. I do try to order a lot of my groceries online, but sometimes if I have to run out real quick, I feel a lot safer that everybody's wearing their mask. So this is a chart I really like to show people. So in the first section, it says very high. You can see one person is coughing and the other one is just standing you know, close to them. Neither of them have a mask on. So the person coughing is spreading all of those germs to the other person who's not sick. So you have a very high chance of contracting COVID when both of you don't have a mask on. Now, you'll have a high chance of contracting COVID if you're with somebody who is sick, who coughs, and they don't have a mask on, but you still do. So the reason why that is high is because the person who is sick is spitting all those germs on you. So there's nothing covering their germs, it's just you. So you do have a little bit of protection, but if you think about it, if they cough and they don't have a mask on, you can still get droplets on your face that you don't know about. And if you scratch your face or you take your mask off and there's some that are close to your mouth, to your eyes, to your ears, they can get in those passageways and get you sick. So a medium chance of you contracting COVID is when the person who is actually sick is wearing the mask. So you can see in the first two pictures, all of the germs are going towards the person. And the third, in the third picture where he is wearing a mask, the mask is helping contain some of those germs where it can still reach the other person, but him wearing a mask that is contracting all the germs in there can help not spread COVID as frequently and as easy as, as easier than if he who was sick did not wear a mask. And then the very low chance of you contracting COVID is where both of you are wearing a mask. So he coughs and the mask is containing all of the uh, germs, but you also have a mask on. So those germs aren't getting to you as easily. So again, the CDC is recommending everybody wear a mask, so that way the germs are just stuck in your mask and not spreading to individuals. So how to stay physically active during COVID? So as we know, a lot of things have been shut down. Gyms have been closed, um, along with, um, you know, lots of other places. So what can we do? So we can do an at-home exercise program. And I know your guys, um, can't, your classes have also been canceled, your exercise classes, and unfortunately ours are canceled here too. So I've done a lot of at-home exercise programs with things that you guys can use in your home. Also, you can perform a lot of outdoor activities. I've had several people come to me and say, you know, if I go outside, is the virus in the air? The virus is not in the air. You are not gonna get it from walking outside. Being outside is actually the safest way um, to perform outdoor activities and to do any activities at all. Because if you do cough, it's going into the air and it's evaporating, where like if you cough inside, you might not have a good airflow and it's getting in the vents and it could spread that way too. So performing outdoor activities, um, taking walks outside, walking your dog, gardening. You can run around with your grandkids. I know some people so, so, social distance with their grandkids, so then you guys are social distancing together. Yoga and pool exercises. So exercises with items in your home. So you can get a plastic grocery bag so you can easily add weight to a plastic grocery bag by adding a few cans of food, a book or two, or something that has a little weight to it. You can use a water bottle, so they vary in size and shape, but usually a 24 ounce water bottle with water in it weighs about two pounds. You can also add something else to your bottle for more weight, like gravel or sand. So this is a 17 ounce water bottle. This weighs one pound. 
So if you get a bigger water bottle, that would weigh two. Um, a lot of our residents here just use one pound weight. So if you filled this with water all the way, it would be one pound. And then, you know, if you would like some more weight, you could do gravel or sand. And then a towel or a pillowcase. If you use a towel for these exercises, try and use a hand towel that you can fold multiple times. And if you use a pillow, try to use one that you can fold in half. And these are all um, items that you guys should have in your home. At least, you should have at least one of these items in your home. So what can we do with a plastic grocery bag? So we can do squats. So let's say you get a grocery bag and you fill it with two cans of tomato soup. So you can hold the bag with the weight in front of you with two hands, stand with your feet shoulder width apart and bend at the knees and hips and squat down like you're sitting. And if you feel more comfortable, you can have a chair behind you and you can squat down, hit the chair and come back up. And that's one squat. And you also have weights in front of you. So that gives you more exercise going up to help strengthen your legs. You can also do a bicep curl. So hold the bag with weights at the side of your leg. So one arm should be straight at your side. You can either do this seated or standing. Curl your arm hand towards your shoulder, straighten your arm to repeat. So a plastic water bottle. So you could do a shoulder press. You hold the bottle in one hand to the side of your ear with your elbow to the side. Push the bottle straight over your head until your arm is straight. Bring the bottle back to your ear and push up again, then repeat. Lateral raises, that's where you hold your arm straight down to your side while holding your water, water bottle down in one hand. Lift your arm straight out to the side, lifting your hand no higher than your shoulder, so it should be straight just like this. Then lower your arm back down to your side. So you can do a shoulder press. I can demonstrate, hopefully this water's close. So this will be a shoulder press. And then a lateral is you're gonna have your hand straight down and you're gonna bring it to the side, hold it, and then bring it back down. So a towel or a pillowcase. So you can do hand pushers, hold the pillow or towel between your palms in front of your chest and your elbow level out to the side. Push the hands together on the pillow or towel for one to two seconds, then relax and repeat. Thigh squeezers, while seated in a chair, place the pillow or towel between your knees Squeeze your thighs, knees together for one to two seconds, and then relax and repeat. You can also use, if you have like a little medicine ball, you can also put those in between your, um, your knees or your thighs and squeeze them together, and that will help your leg strength. And then you can also, I know we do these in our exercise class, you can also put a pillowcase or a towel or medicine ball, a little exercise ball in between your legs, hold it, and you can do sit to stands and do squats, and that will help improve your balance, your core, and your leg muscles all at one time. You can also do hand squeezers. So that's grab a small towel and ball it up in one hand, squeeze the towel tightly for one to two seconds, relax and repeat. So here are just some rules about uh, doing exercises at home. So you should check with your wellness coordinator before doing exercises to make sure you're capable of completing them. I'm not sure if you guys have a wellness coordinator at um, United Senior Services. However, I do have my information at the end of this PowerPoint. Feel free to reach out. You can write down my email and my number and I'd be more than happy to talk you through exercises or even come to you and we can do a little private lesson. Make sure you have done a warm up. So we do warm up exercises before we do our exercise classes. We start with our head, our neck, our shoulders. We move to our core, do a few leg exercises and a few ankle and foot exercises just to get warmed up. Preform each exercise on both sides. So if you're doing a press, 
Make sure you do it with the other arm too. When performing strengthening exercises, start off with a couple sets of 10 or seven to 10 repetitions, working up to two sets of 15. So this is if you're just starting out working out. We don't want you to overdo it. So it's normal for you to be sore a couple hours or a couple days, even after exercise, but you wanna build your muscle up over time. So we wanna start out slow and gradually go up to more repetition. Make sure there's no stabbing pain in your joints or muscles and while you're performing the exercises. And if there is, you should stop immediately and consult your doctor. And like I previously said, your workout should allow for some muscle soreness either that evening, the next day, or even up to two days later. So I know when I work out and I'm doing any type of exercise, I do not get sore the next day, but I get sore 48 hours after. So let's say if you do decide to do some of these home exercises and you're not sore um, the first day or even that evening, if you get sore after 48 hours, that is still common too. So how can we stay mentally healthy during COVID-19? So at Oakland, we are currently on um, a lockdown from Governor DeWine. So we do allow visitors, but they have to be outside. We have a visitation station. Um, but a lot of them, you know, their families are out of state. They're not able to travel. So, you know, I know it's been really hard, especially on older adults, you know, not seeing their families. So what are some ways, you know, we cannot become depressed or have anxiety and stay mentally healthy during these times? So you can practice self-care. So you can do that um, either by journaling, by building a healthy mind, body connection, by doing brain games, and how exercise improves mental health. So we're going to go over a couple of these. So self-care can mean a lot of things. Um, showing kindness to yourself. Self-care for me is, well, okay, I shouldn't eat that brownie and I should eat an apple instead so that I'm not feeling bad. Um, maybe learn to slow down. So I think we all need a reminder sometimes we just need to take it by day by day and not um, overexert ourselves. Um, you know, be supportive towards yourself and others. We all make mistakes. Sometimes things happen. And, you know, be acceptance, you know, be accepting to you and who you are. If you're trying to reach a goal, make sure you do support yourself. You slow down, you know, you maybe get some friends to help you out. So then you have a support system to help you reach your goals. So there are several ways that we can practice self-care and then everybody is different. So you may have some other things that you like to do. So where, what are some other ways to do self-care? So it helps you with better sleep. So taking better care of yourself and being mindful of your health can calm your mind and reduce mental health stresses, which leads to better sleep quality. I know when I sleep better at night, the next day is always much better. You have more energy as well. So taking the time to exercise and be more active can lead to an increase in overall motivation and energy. Maintain independence. So practicing self-care can lead to an increase in functional health or maintenance or self-reliance. And you have less overall stress. So, you know, if you're getting a better night's sleep, if you have more energy to go out and run your errands like you need to do, you'll probably be less stressed overall. So one way we can do this is by journaling. I've had several people at Oakwood tell me that, you know, they're having anxiety, that they're having depression, and what can they do to help better themselves? I have told them that journaling is a life-changing habit that will help you seek and find more intentional life. So it helps you by empowering you to live true to yourself, teaching you to make more intentional choices, and grounding with you when you feel overwhelmed or out of control. So if you don't know where to, what to write about or where to start, a great place to begin is by asking some of these questions below. How do you feel right now? So you could say, you know, I'm feeling a little stressed. I didn't get to do all my errands that I wanted to do today. So why do you feel that way? Maybe you didn't have enough energy to run those errands because you didn't get a good night's sleep before. Why, how do you want to feel? So you want to have more energy. You want to get a better night's sleep. Maybe you need a better sleep schedule. 
So what can you do to feel that way? So you should go back through and see, okay, well, yesterday I went to bed late, so then I don't have as much energy to perform those errands today. So you can kind of evaluate some of the choices that you did. So that can help you, you write things down, you can see it on the piece of paper, and then you can work towards your goals to better yourself. So building a healthy mind-body connection. So we do yoga here at Oakwood. So physically, yoga can improve posture, range of motion, and strength, reduce inflammation, lowering your heart rate and blood pressure, and alleviate chronic pain. Psychologically, yoga can improve your mental clarity. You can boost your mood and decrease anxiety and depression. I do have several residents that do yoga that say it really helps them with their anxiety and depression. Spiritually, yoga can help cultivate embodied awareness. And that is when um, you have physical sensations, thoughts, moods, breath patterns, and energy level. So let's say you have some anxiety and you notice when you have anxiety, your heart rate goes up, you're breathing, you start breathing more, your breaths. Well, if you do some yoga, you can calm your blood pressure. You can work, it, work on deep breathing. So you can focus on your breaths, which would help alleviate your anxiety. You could also do uh, meditation. So the benefits of meditation, Studies have shown that measurable changes in brain regions that are associated with memory, sense of self, empathy, and stress. So some research suggests that meditation helps people manage conditions like asthma, cancer, chronic pain, high blood pressure, irritable bowel syndrome, and tension headaches. Meditation allows us to gain new perspectives on stressful situations, build skills to manage stress, increase patience and tolerance and reduce negative emotions. So when we do yoga here at Oakland, when we are done, I turn off um, most of the lights and we do a two minute meditation exercise. And how we do that is we do turn off the lights and I play some um, spiritual music and I tell my residents to go to your happy place. And for me, my happy place is laying on a beach, listening to the waves, not having care in the world. Um, I know a lot of their happy places are being with their grandkids, being with their family, um, going back with their loved ones. So sometimes at night, maybe if you're having trouble going to sleep, you could lay in bed and you could go to your happy place and you could think about all the great times that you had. That way it alleviates, um, it brings down your blood pressure, it helps you concentrate on your breathing, and it gets you relaxed to be able to have a better night's sleep. We do quite a few brain games here at Oakwood, and I love brain games, and I think my residents do too. So brain games consist of crossword puzzles, a word search, word scramble, Sudoku, coloring therapy, and luminosity, which luminosity is brain games that you can do online. And so how does exercise improve your mental health? So it helps reduce anxiety symptoms and improves your mood. It helps keep, keep anxiety from coming back once you're feeling better. So when you work out or when you're being physically active, your body releases brain chemicals called neurotransmitters and endorphins. And that is the type of feeling when you like, you know, when you go to your happy place, you have a good feeling and that's what that kind of feeling is. So you working out helps you reduce, um, take your mind off worries and that's how you can cope with anxiety and depression. It also reduces immune system chemicals that can worsen depression. And we have had several studies um, that have been conducted, and we found that our residents who work out are healthier, they get less sick because their immune system is up. And then, you know, them doing their brain games helps them stay mentally uh, challenged. So they're, they're, they don't have as much memory loss, and their anxiety and depression isn't as bad. So that's all I have today. Are there any questions or comments? Also, my information is down below. So you can 
write down my phone number or my email. You can ask any questions as well. Um, if you don't feel comfortable, you can give me a call or like I said, email and then we can discuss. Any questions? No, thank you. Yeah. No, it was very good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Lainey. I really appreciate you again taking the time out of your day to uh, to do this for us. Um, are there any any questions? I know she asked. I just want to make sure. Um, did everybody have a chance to write down their contact information if you want that? If not, you can reach out to us here at USS, and we can provide that with you as well. Um, but yeah, any any questions right now? I don't have any. Very good. No. Awesome. No, good. You know, I think overall with this presentation, we have to remember, and I tell my residents here, eventually this COVID is going to be over. There's going to be a vaccine. We're going to get through this together. And I know everybody's tired of hearing that because I get tired of hearing it too, but there, we will get through it. And you have to stay physically active and mentally active. And you have to remember, you know, I'm surrounded by people that love me. I may have to social distance from them, but technology is great these days and all of you I see have a camera. So you can FaceTime your family members. My parents live in Indiana, so we FaceTime quite a bit. You can call them, you can write letters, and there are just multiple ways that you guys can stay healthy, either like, you know, I said with the water bottle, uh, with grocery bags, and then, you know, just doing those brain games, going and walking outside, going swimming if you guys have a pool, doing yoga to help calm down at night. There are several ways that you can stay mentally and physically active while we are being quarantined. And I hope that it's over soon, but unfortunately, I don't think that's anytime soon, but we're, we're crossing our fingers. So just let me know if you guys have any questions. I hopefully you guys can still see my information on the screen.